In this five part video series, I'm going to show you how to make this cherry wall cabinet step by step. Just like every other project, we're going to begin here at the lumber rack. I've already picked through all of my cherry boards, laid them out, and found a few good boards that I think I can use to make me two of these wall cabinets. Now this, this lumber here is curly cherry. Uh, I was able to get some really beautiful curly cherry the last time I was at my sawmill, and it was only a buck more board foot, so I grabbed all that I could get. Now the top and the bottom panel are what we're going to focus on first. I've got a couple of short boards here that are going to give me 8 inches in width so I don't have to glue up any boards to get to that final panel size. I like to start by breaking down the rough stock to as close to the final size as possible as this makes the joining process faster and more efficient. When laying out the boards I like to give myself about an extra inch in length and width. Now I can begin the milling process. I first start by joining one face and then I run the other side through the planer to make the surfaces both parallel and flat. I'm leaving the boards a little thicker than they need to be for now. So these boards are about an eighth of an inch thicker than they need to be and I'm just going to let them set here for a couple of days with the, uh, the stickers in between them so the air can flow on top and underneath them just so if they're going to move it's going to get it out of the way so I could then take it down to its final thickness. These I'm really shooting for seven eighths but if I've got to take them down a little bit below that, that's all that I can do. I don't have the ability to get five quarter curly cherry. And if I did, it's not going to match the same cherry. Uh, I'm just going to get as close as I can. But the final dimensions are seven eighths of an inch in thickness. So I'm going to let these set for a couple of days. With the boards milled to their final thickness, I go ahead and cut them to their width. So before cutting these boards to length, what I like to do is look at them and look at each end of the board. And if I see any blemish, such as tear out or a crack or anything, I want to make sure to cut the majority of that off. Because the first thing I do is uh, clean up one end and then that will be the end that I push up against the stop block when I cut the other end, thus taking it to its final length. So on each of the boards, I'm going to look at both ends just to make sure if there's anything I need to remove. I'll do that during this part here. To cut the pieces to length, I first start by cleaning up one end of the board. Then I put the clean end up against the stop block and cut the board to length. So now we're ready to go ahead and make a few markings on these boards for the tapered sliding dovetails. So before I do that, I want to look at each of these boards and find the inside faces and the outside faces just in case there's something that I want to hide, such as this brown streaking on this board. I want to make sure that that's on an inside face so that when you're looking at the cabinet, you don't see it. Now granted, these are going to be hanging on the wall and you're probably not going to see those faces, the outside faces anyway. It's still a good habit to get into uh, when you're building a project. So I know that I want this to be the bottom panel and I want to make sure that this is the inside face and that this is the back. So I'm going to write bottom and inside face and then I want to write back back here because the tapered sliding dovetails are going to be uh, cut on this back edge. So to make the markings for this, we want to make sure that we're always referencing this back edge. So to begin, we're going to be marking the center line for this sliding dovetail because we're not going to be just hollowing that out with our dovetail bit in the router. We're actually going to make a, uh, a first cut, a dado cut with a 3 16th straight bit just so that when we're using our dovetail bit, it doesn't have to hog away so much material. So we're going to be working off the center lines. And to begin, I've got a combination square set to 15 16 and I'm just going to make a mark on both sides. And with the other combination square, I've got it set to 5 and 1 eighths of an inch. I'm going to extend these lines up and come across that way because that's where my bit's going to stop. So now we're going to route the initial groove using the 3 16th straight bit that's installed in the router. And that channel is going to be a half of an inch deep. So what I've done is pushed it down, zeroed it out, and I got my gauge set so that it'll remove a half of an inch. But I'm going to take that in two passes. So to begin, what I'm going to do is put the router on the board and line up my bit so that the center of the bit is lined up with that center line. So next what I'm going to be using is a simple right angle guide. It's just a board that's four inches wide and, and roughly 12 inches long. And I've got a scrap block screwed to the bottom of it so that it acts kind of like a, uh, an edge guide for the router. And what I've also got is another piece that's going to act as an adjustable fence so that I can push it up against the router, run it across, and then when I offset it with a uh, 16th inch piece of scrap, it will move. That way, instead of using this right angle guide, I would have to pull it back, draw a straight line, and then set it at an angle. 
It's easier to use the right angle guide with an adjustable fence, slide it back, put the 16th inch shim, clamp it into place, and route the taper. So what I'm gonna do next is bump this up against the router, make sure that my right angle guide, this edge block is pushed up against the edge of the cherry board, and I'm just gonna spin this around until it's bumped right up against the router. And so that we can get repeatability from this setup from side to side on both boards, what we're gonna do is take a combination square, hold the jig down, your right angle guide, and we're gonna set a combination square to the distance from the edge of the board to your right angle guide. And we're gonna lock this into place and we're gonna use this for the rest of the four cuts. So you wanna make sure to leave this locked and to not change it. So that way when we come back to route the, the dovetail, we'll just simply line our jig up with our combination square and we know that our dovetail guide, or our dovetail bit rather, will be referencing this center line as well. I clamp the right angle guide and adjustable fence into place and route the dado. After the first pass, I'll lower the bit and make another pass until I get to the half inch in depth. So with our initial groove routed, we're ready to go ahead and switch over and start cutting the tapered sliding dovetail. I've removed the 3 16 bit and put in a 14 degree dovetail bit in the router and set the depth to a half of an inch. And I've also got a 16th of an inch thick shim that we're going to be using. This piece is 3 quarters of an inch wide and roughly 14 inches long. So we're going to be doing this in two passes on each groove. We're initially going to set our right angle guide to the same distance from the edge of the board using our combination square that we set up in the previous scene. And as you can see, I've not moved this one from the last time when we routed that 3 16 groove. So what we're going to do is set the router up with the dovetail again at a half of an inch in depth, route the initial groove, and then what we're gonna do is loosen up the, the clamp on this adjustable fence, put the 16th of an inch shim in there, clamp it back into place, and then route that groove again with the dovetail bit and it's gonna give us that tapered groove. Now another thing to note that's extremely important is when you're stopping this groove uh, and you turn your router off, make sure to not move your router at all. Uh, you wanna let that bit come to a complete stop before you remove it. Just to give you an example of what it should look like, I've got a scrap piece of pine here that I've routed a dovetail on the end, again, making it tapered at the router table, but this is what we're going for. Um, as you can see, when you first put it in, you're thinking, wow, that's way too loose. So as you keep sliding it, the slide gets smaller, and this end of the dovetail gets bigger, and as you can see, it's extremely tight now. The side panels were milled up the same way as the top and the bottom by letting them acclimate to my garage before taking them down to their final thickness. And so now I'm cutting them to their final width and length. For the length, I'm going to be using my crosscut sled with a stop block. Before cutting the dovetails on the side panels, I first squared up the rounded corners on the taper sliding dovetails on the top and the bottom panels using my chisels. So moving ahead, we're going to be routing the tapered sliding dovetails on our side panels. And we're going to be using our scrap piece to really dial in this router bit. I've got the dovetail bit installed on the router table, and I've set the height of the router bit to the same exact depth of the groove that we cut on our top and bottom panels. And I've also got a sacrificial fence installed to help support the boards because they're going to be running them on their ends. Now the boards are 27 and a half inches long, so this eight inch wide uh, sacrificial fence that I have installed is really gonna help su support the board just to make it a safer cut. Now I've also got the, uh, the dovetail bit buried inside of the sacrificial fence with uh, probably a right under a quarter of an inch exposed, but you are going to have to dial in your own router bit because your setup is gonna be probably a little bit different from mine. So take your scrap piece, uh, run it a few times to really dial it in, and as you can see, these are all of the cutoffs that I, that I used uh, testing this fit to make it just right. This board used to be way longer than this. So take your time, dial it in with your scrap board before going to your final pieces. Now when it comes time to routing the side panel, there's something special we're gonna have to do. We're gonna need to mark the outside face, so I just wrote out, and we're gonna need to mark the backside edge. So I've got an arrow pointing to this edge, that's the backside. And we're gonna take our 16th of an inch shim, tape it along the back edge before we run it over the bit, giving us the tapered sliding dovetail. Now we're gonna to need to put that on the outside back edge because if you remember, this is the top panel. When we put our right angle guide here and we adjusted it, putting the shim in there, 
all it did was taper this outside face of the uh, of the groove so that's why we're going to be putting the shim on the back outside face of the uh, of our scrap piece and on our side panels as well i'm going to use the push pad to push it up against the fence and my right hand is going to hold it down because this could have a tendency of lifting this way or this way as you run it over the bit i make the first pass by slowly moving the piece over the bit i took my time each pass to help prevent as much tear out as possible Next, I flip the board and route the other side. And since we did a stopped groove, I'm going to need to cut some of this off on the uh, scrap piece here. And to help hold this up, I'm just going to use my right angle clamping jig that I made. And I've got a video showing how to make these. It's really simple. And they're really handy for stuff like this. Because now, I can do this hands-free and get it exactly where I want. So I'm going to make it flush in the back and line it up and flush with the groove. And with the pencil, just mark it where the groove stops. To remove the excess waste, I head over to the bandsaw to get close to the shoulder, but I stay about an eighth of an inch away. And I'm just using a sharp chisel. I'm gonna remove the remainder of this waste. As you can see, at the beginning, it appears really loose, but as it starts to push it in more, the taper starts to get bigger. And there we go. It's nice and tight and it's good in the back. So now what we're going to do is the same exact thing to the side panels. Take your time and route the side panels the same exact way we did the test piece. Keep the pace nice and slow to help with the tear out. Next I move the shim to the other end of the panel to route the dovetail. And like before, I'm gonna line it up with the groove and make my mark. And then it's back to the bandsaw to remove the majority of the waste. All right, so I've got everything put back together and we're gonna go ahead and cut the angle on the front as well as riding the chamfer around three of the sides on the top and the bottom. Before we take this apart, I went ahead and test fit everything and put it back together. So before we take it apart, I'm just gonna take a pencil and make a mark on the outside edge where the uh, side panels connect to the top and the bottom panel. So that way when I'm routing my chamfer, I know that I'm gonna sneak up on this line and make sure that I don't go too far uh, because you don't wanna route a chamfer underneath where the, uh, the side panels will connect to the top and the bottom panel. Otherwise, you're gonna see a gap and it's not gonna look very good. So I've got the bottom panel with the grooves facing up and here's the top panel with the grooves facing down. And I've got some double-sided tape on the bottom panel and I'm gonna stick the top panel on it. That way I'm gonna cut the groove or cut the, uh, the, the angled cut off of both of them at the same exact time just so that I know that the angle is exactly the same. So I'm gonna line them up and then put pressure on it. Now with a combination square, set it to one inch and on the ends, put a little mark. So that's how far down we're gonna be coming with our cut. And with the measuring tape, find the center of the board, which should be nine inches. And then just using a straight edge or a ruler, line it up and draw the lines. And I'm gonna to come to the other side and do the same thing. It's back to the bandsaw to remove the waste. Again, I stay just outside of my line. I'm using my low angle jack plane to remove the waste and take me down to my line. After cleaning both sides of the taper up, step back and make sure everything looks pleasing and stop when you like the appearance of the panels. It is a personal preference after all. All right, now we're over at the router table and I've got the 45 degree chamfer bit in. And since I mentioned before, this is some extremely curly cherry, I'm gonna be removing this waste in two passes until I get to my final depth. Now I've installed this indexing pan because I'm going to be removing the waste off of the end grain first and it's just safer to pivot off of that pin and put the end grain into the bit and then ride against that bearing. So if you have a, an indexing pin on your router table, I recommend using that.
After the first pass, I slowly raise the bit and make a couple more passes to get to my final depth. So now this is what we're left with. We've got a perfect angle cut. They match on the top and the bottom. And we've chamfered three of the four sides. And it's nice and clean.